Hello, welcome. Question 6A of WASI 2023, September edition. So, in a setting spider web, the length of the shortest and the longest thread are 3.4 millimeters and 50.2 millimeters, respectively, meaning the first for the shortest, the second for the longest. So the successive equally spaced threads are also 1.2 millimeters apart. So if the length of the cross thread form an arithmetic progression, then we have to find the number of what? Cross thread. The thread that crosses the web of longest and the shortest. All right. So if we are taking this as an AP, Knowing the shortest, meaning the beginning, is going to be 3.4. The end is going to be 50.2. But with the interval of 1.2, they said successive equally spaced, meaning the differences between each of the term is 1.2. So I can generate my series or my sequence. So adding 1.2 to this will give you... 4.6, the next could be 5.8, the next could be 7.0, then we have 50.2. So this is the, the our series or our sequence we can have. From here, we can say that our first term will be 3.4. The common difference will be 1.2 and the last term will be the same as this will be equals to 50.2. Remembering the formula, un equals to a plus n minus 1 times d. So by substitution, this is the last number. So 50.2 is equals to a going to be 3.4 then we have n minus 1 1.2 what are we looking for we are looking for n the number of threads in between so let's expand 50.2 3. Point. this is addition so we expand here 1.2 n minus 1.2 as in if you expand the n will multiply 1.2, 1, 1 will also multiply 1.2. So we can see constant, constant, constant. We can group them together. So before that, I can have 50.2 equals to this minus this will be 2.2 plus 1.2 n. We can now do our subtraction. 50.2 minus 2.2 equals to 1.2a. What are we going to get from here? I believe this will be 0. So this will be 48. So 48.0 equals 1.2a. Now let's divide by the coefficient 1.2, 1.2. And that will give rise to our n to be equals to. This is going to be, uh, how do you call it? Multiplying by 10 will give you 480 and 12. 12 will go here four times. So you are going to have 40. Meaning what you are looking for is 40 cross threads that are in between the longest and the shortest side. Question B of the same question. So at noon, a cargo plane leaves a town. That is the Moi Airport and head towards another town, Kusumu, which is 500 kilometers away. At a very top speed of 180 kilometers per hour, that is the first statement. Then at 1 p.m. exactly, a jet takes off from the same town, Moi, and flies on the same course, meaning on the same distance, at a very top speed of 450 kilometers per hour. So the question is, what time will the jet overtake the cargo plane? 
So if we want to take the journey, if you want to take this journey, we can start by saying that let's first of all indicate the the distance from the airport then to the destination so i'll be using m to indicate more then i'll be using k to indicate kusumu now if this is the distance they are all going to apply the same distance from start to finish so let's just say our distance is 500 kilometers up to this all right so at the time this is where we can say noon the cargo is going to start a journey so when the cargo start a journey it will be traveling with an hour meaning it will get to a particular destination before the airplane the jet will take off because it has traveled an hour from noon meaning from 12 o'clock it is traveling so it will all means cover some portion of this 500 500 kilometers it will cover some portion before the jet will take off so let's just say we are indicating here to be the place that the cargo will reach on the journey before the jet take off so if i'm laboring this with take time let us say t so it means that the distance here must also be known which we don't know so we can represent here before a variable so it means from here to here is given to us then the journey that is from here to here 500 part is taking y the remaining is going to be 500 minus what y all these are distances these are all distances relative to noon and 1 pm so 1 pm will be here the same time 1 pm is here the man in the cargo will reach here at 1 pm this will be the point so now that we know this we can also find the time taken by the cargo don't forget the the distance will be relative to the time so let us say from here to here let's indicate here as t as the time taken by the cargo t by the cargo then for the time by the plane don't forget if the cargo reached this place at the time of t then it means your plane will be written here uh, t minus one meaning uh, one hour after so if here is five hours from here to here five hours that means this plane will be taking only what four hours so how do we do that let's just say we know speed let me start from here we know speed is equal to the distance over time taken so the speed of the two journeys are known from start to finish we know the distance is also known it is a time we are interested in so we can make the time the subject when the time go it will become the time equals to the distance travel over the speed so let's start by the cargo right the cargo's time that it will take to reach here the time it will take to reach at this particular place so that is going to be t here equals to the distance covered before the time is t the distance covered here is going to be y divided by the speed that the car is traveling the car is traveling at the speed of 180 so in this case if you are looking for this this is what i'm going to get if you want to find the the unknown variable which is the distance covered before we can also equate that all right so time 
taken by the jet to reach the point T is going to be T minus 1. As I said earlier on, the cargo is taking a time of 5 hours. Then it means that the jet will be taking 4 hours to get to this place. So that will also mean the distance covered will still be Y. The time, the speed, which is going to be 450. So let's just say this is our first equation, the second equation. So we are having two simultaneous equations. So what I can do is that I can make Y the subject here and make Y the subject here so that I equate the two since they are the same Y. So I can say that from equation one here, if you cross multiply, Y will be equals to 180 times what? T. Then also, from equation 2, if you cross multiply, y will be equals to 450 into bracket t minus 1. So now I can say that y in this place, y in this place, that could be the same thing. So if the left are the same, the right will also be the same. So I can equate the 180t to be equals to 450t minus 1, since y is the same thing. All right, so what do we do? We try to expand the second bracket. 180t equals to 450t minus 450. I'm seeing the like terms. T, T. Let this T go and bring the 450 as positive. Negative crossing the equal sign become positive. We maintain the 450 T. Then we bring the positive 180 to become negative 180 T. So you can see in this case, we can easily subtract this. Then divide by that answer, which will be the coefficient. So from here, what do we get? 480 equals to, I think it's 450, yeah, 450 equals to 450 minus 180, I believe we get 270 of the T. Let's take our coefficient to divide. I believe this will cancel, so T will be equals to, if this cancel, let's take 3. No, let's take 9, 9 will go there, 5. Now we'll go here, 3. So we can, we can rewrite this also to become a mixed fraction, one whole number, 2 out of 3. The whole number will be telling us the hour. Then this fraction will be giving us the minute. And this 2 out of 3 minutes can also multiply 60 to give us 20 as 40 minutes. So simply put, the time... So the time that the jet will be taking in order to overtake the cargo plane is going to be 1 hour. Then we know we have what? 40 minutes. That will mean 1.40 p.m. 1.40 p.m. will be the time. Okay. Thank you for watching. Like, share, comment, subscribe if you are new to the channel.